How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Zevon Works channel. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Master Grade Blast Impulse Gundam. Right now, the impulse be separated into four parts by myself because I don't want to damage the code or the war side decal during the transformation process. So I think I will just start the video with all the parts separated and I'll show you about the transformation. Then at the middle of the review, I'll put it back together and, you know, showing the articulation and showing the things that I should be saying. So you know this time is a different review and of course i'm not taking out the xgce blast impulse for the comparison because that's two different grades and two different things personally i haven't tested out anything yet i haven't tested the stability i haven't tested the articulation so right now is really my first hand experience so first i would like to show you the leftover parts before i move into the uh, articulation part and the details part or the transformation part or the combined part so First, let's look at the leftovers. The leftovers this time is not as exaggerating as the Hakushiki Crash. The Hakushiki Crash seriously have a mountain of leftovers. This time, for the leftovers for the impulse, it's pretty straightforward. It's just some potty caps that got left out, and then you can see the L runner barely uses any part. It just used one part for the for the flighter for the backpack, and then the rest of the part right here. I don't. I'm not really sure which part it is. And then for the E runner right here, there's a left of a face part right here because the the face part this time is new. And then you can see that because U runner is a duplicate runner. So of course there's going to be one left of a face and then we have the thruster and the heat radiation fence that got left over. And that's basically the leftover parts. So first let's look at some small accessories right here. So these are the small accessories that we got in the Master Grade Blast Impulse. So first we can see that there's the full movable hand that we always seen on the Master Grade kits. And as usual, you know, the thumb and the index finger is a separate joint and the rest will be moving together. And we also have a ball joint at the end of the hand right here for you to adjust the hand's um, direction. And then we also have the weapon holding hand right here. I prefer to use the, we uh, the weapon holding hand because I don't really like to adjust the fingers um, to hold the weapon on the, movable, on the movable hands. And we also have the action base adapter right here. And if you don't want to put in the action base adapter, we have the small piece right here for you to seal the spot. And then up here, we have this large piece right here. This is the multi-pack connector. In case you want to put Air Striker IWSP onto your Impulse Gundam, this will be the piece that you need um, to use. It's pretty simple. You just put it at the back of the torso of the Impulse Gundam, and then you just put on your Air Striker, put on your IWSP, and done. But I don't know why you need to use it because I don't think IWSP or Air Striker doesn't look really good on the Impulse Gundam. That's just my personal opinion. Now, let's start with the chest flyer. Chest fly right now is at a closed position and I gotta say that this position really looks like me sleeping in my math class during my high school days. And then you know, it's nothing really special. So first, let's start with like the smallest thing. So the rival here, we can move the scope around and then we can move the sub handle as well. We can move the sub handle like this, move the scope like this. And then now let's quickly turn it back to the normal MS mode that we see. So first we need to move down the shoulders. And then, you know, just moving, just slightly adjust the arms position and then just push back. And now welcome back to the MS mode. Let's go over the small accessory for the chest flyer. So each flyer, each fighter in this Impulse Gundam, they have their own action base adapter. This one right here is for the chest flyer. And then these two parts right here is for the is for the shield to land to recreate the landing position of the chest flyer. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pull out the parts from the shield because I don't know why, but I just can't pull out the parts from the shield and I can't show you how to put in the landing racks. And essentially, it's just putting one at the top right here and one at the bottom right here. But unfortunately, I can't pull out the piece. I can't show you how to put in the landing racks, but it's pretty simple. You just find the joint and then push in done and then i also forgot to mention that the shield is able to expand is a pretty simple expand it's just slide open the next one i want to go through is the landing racks right here so the landing racks i already put them on one position at the 
dark blue piece right here at the skirt armor and then two will be located like slightly lower than the knees and that's it so right now let's not talk too much let's just transform it back to the normal ms mode so just quickly do this for those of you that played with the wing gundam before is a actually pretty similar transformation so first unfold the feet and just slightly adjust the legs position and there you go the next fighter right here will be the core fighter right here the core fighter is just like this and because it's a early mg kit so there's a lot of part that you need to repaint on this core fighter such as the the nose of the core fighter right here is supposed to be gray and inside the cockpit is supposed to be gray as well and this part of the wings is blue the missile's head is gray and then the missile tail is red and then at the sub wings right here the first layer, which is the outside of the wing, is supposed to be yellow. And then the second layer right here is supposed to be gray. So a lot of parts that you need to, you need to recolor. And then the window of the core fighter is supposed to be, uh, you know, it's supposed to be open. But unfortunately, I broke the part. So I just glue it back in and I can't show you how to open it. And in there, you can see that Shinaska is sitting in there. So the small accessories right here. So first... We have two action base adapter. This one right here is for the core fighter, and this one right here is for the leg flyer that I just forgot to mention. And then we also have two pilot figures. Um, the left one is Luna Maria Hawk, and then the right one is Sheen Asuka. Again, you can have fun repainting that. I'm fine. Now, sorry to have you waiting for that long. Now, let's put it back as the Impulse Gundam. So first, let's starting with the Core Fighter. What you have to do is just remove the wheels first. Next, you will need to remove the missiles at the side. So next up, it's a pretty simple process. What we have to do is just close the sub wings right here and then fold in the main wings. And then we first turn the, turn the nose of the Core Fighter and then we just move the whole part down and then you should have something like this but i imagine it's not feeling that good mr shinaska because you're piloting the gundam facing down now let's just slide in the core fighter and now the chest fire finally the impulse is back together now let's go through the articulation that you all been waiting for as usual we're gonna start with the head of course all the cameras at the head right here is all stickers. It's a pretty straightforward thing. So first let's check out the movement. Lift up, lift up is not really because the back of the head right here, there's a piece right here that interrupting the movement. Lift up, not really. Lift down is pretty good. And then moving side to side right here is pretty limited because the, as I said, at the back of the head right here, this piece is really limiting the movement of the head. So impulse don't have a traditional design. The Vulcan gun is not on the head is on the chest so this right here is the bunk gun and then as i showed you before this part can be moved as well because i do because this part right here is for you to uh, cover the head during the chest part transformation and yeah that's it and then we can we also have the cockpit open right here as well the two piece right here you can just open it and then you can see the cockpit inside but honestly the cockpit is already been covered because the cockpit uh the actual cockpit is the core fighter and the core fighter now is covered up so you you can't really see the cockpit so let's just check out the movement for the torso part right here so first moving side to side is is pretty average it's not like really mind-blowing or anything like that unfortunately it's not able to move front and back as well because you know the joint inside there's not a design for you to moving front and back as well so the best you can do is just moving side to side like this for the arms movement first it can move 360 lift up and then you know you can bend the bend the arm as well for the hands right here you can move around thumb and index separate movement and then you can the rest will be moving together and you also can change the direction of the hands and the shoulder there's an individual joint for you to lift up as well and the whole arm can move to the front not really well when you pull it out it's still not really when you pull this joint out is just help you to transform the upper body bar to the chest flyer Let's look at the waist right here. So the waist part right here, of course, the front skirt is the individual joint, so you can lift up individually. But 
you know, appreciate the fact that the that Bandai actually gave us some detail inside the front skirt, so which is pretty nice. And then you know the side skirt can slightly lift up as well. And you know they recreate the scene where you can pull out the uh the Amish the Amish shredder. I think it's the Amish Schneider, is it that's how you pronounce it? And then you can put it out at the side skirt right here as well. So I did replace the blade to silver because you know, for those of you who watches my channel, you know that I always said it like this: for gold or silver, I will always repaint it. So I repaint the blade to silver, and it looks pretty nice. I gotta say that. And the back skirt also contains some small movement right here. You can you know move up the back skirt and then get it out of the way so you can kick the legs to the back. And then this hole right here is for you to put in the to put in the beam rifle so you can store it at the back ways right here. So you know just simply put it in like this. So it's a pretty straightforward thing. Now let's look at the legs movement right here. So first kicking to the front is really nice. Look at this. The angle is pretty nice. Kicking to the back. You know, if you move out the if you move out the back skirt, you know, the kicking to the back, the angle is pretty impressed. Kicking to the side, not really because the side skirt lifting angle is getting in the way, so not really lifting to the side. And then also bending is pretty nice as well. And then you can see that the knees armor is moving with it as well. And then at the back of the legs right here, you can see that the thruster at the back of the legs can be moved as well. And then we have the feet down here that is foldable. And then you can also see there's a joint inside the feet right here. And then the feet can move slightly side to side, up and back. And then, you know, this, the lower leg armor right here can move as well. If you think that I forgot the backpack, then you're completely wrong. I'm just saving the backpack for the last. So right now, the backpack is attached on the small flighter right here. But as you can see, because the backpack is so heavy right here, the flighter is no longer able to, you know, hold the weight of the backpack. So my suggestion is put onto the action base if you want to display separately. So this part, this small piece right here is for you to plug it under this fighter and then put it on the action base. Now let's remove the backpack from the small fighter first. Now let's show this backpack individually. And from now on, I want to announce that from now on, whenever I'm doing premium band nights, I'm not putting on water side decal anymore because what, I, what I'm trying to show you the articulation or that or the you know just trying to move the gauntlet the water side decal even I put on the Mac code it still fell off. Now, as you can see right here, my blast impulse one of the cannon actually broke got another broken decal again, and I just don't want to risk to break any more decal again. So from now on, all the premium band nice um review will be with that water side decal because the water side decal even I put on the protection code even I put on the Matco is still really fragile and it's really easy to break and it's really hard for me to show the articulation since I need to move the parts around. But anyway, let's look at the movement first. So first, you know, the rail cannon can flip to the front and then the base of the rail can and then at the base of the backpack right here, you can lift up, lift down and then you can move as well. When you move, you can see some small details inside the backpack. So the touch at that design right there is really nice. For well, the cannons right here, they are just big ball joint, but this ball joint is not as bad as the other ball joint that I rent before. This ball joint is actually pretty nice, and the whole backpack is actually really tight. I gotta say that it's really tight, the whole backpack. It's really hard to move the cannons. So the cannon is pretty long like this, and then let's talk about this articulation right here. So first, the I think this is a scope. The scope right here can move as well, and then you can pull out the handle. And then you can pull out the handle for the impulse to hold it. And rest in peace, my decal right here. But this part right here, uh, you can lift up and then you can see some inner detail of the cannon. I like this part. And this dark blue piece right here, we can actually open this. And then you can see that the beam javelin is stored in there. But unfortunately, um, this master grade does not provide you the, the extending of the beam beam javelin instead we have to use a separate beam javelin right here because as i said the u runner is a duplicate runner so we have two beam javelin in this kit and we only have one effect part for the beam javelin so unfortunately um, this master grade didn't provide us the storage for these long beam javelin right here it's pretty sad i wish they give us that feature 
but fine. But I do have one thing to say about this being Japan is the hollow plastic right here looks really ugly. If I'm you, I'll probably use something to fill it up. Before we put on to the impulse, first I need to mention something again. The thruster right here is able to move. And I would just I just want you to take a silence moment to look at the details on the cannon right here. It looks really nice. And then, you know, flip it to the front right here. We can see the missiles. It looks really nice. And then the whole cannon right here, the detail looks really good. I just want you to take a moment and appreciate the details on the cannon. It looks really good. I gotta say that. It looks really good. And on the backpack as well, at the thruster right here. Wow, it looks really good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another round of Can This Mobile Suit Stand? So now I'm going to put on the backpack to the impulse. Can you stand? Oh my god, it can stand. Anyway guys, thank you guys for watching. This is the end of the Blast Impulse video. It took me a long time to get this pose correct because you know, the backpack ball joint is really tight and it's really hard for me to rotate. It took me a long time to get this pose right and you know, Ah, for the whole review though, I think that the Blast Impulse is amazing. If you're an Impulse fan, I think this is a must buy P band I because Finally, you can finish your collection of the Impulse, Force, Sword, and Blast is all here. But I do want to say that uh, it pains me is that when I was playing with the Gobbler, it, I scratch off a couple waterside decal because you know, waterside decal, they are really fragile. Even if you just grip it on for a little while, even you have the protection code or the mag code on it, even you just grip it for a while, it will still fall off. So it just hurts me that the gobbler is a little bit imperfect because I scratch off a couple water side decal. It just pains me. But I do want to say that if you're a fan of Impulse and if you're a fan of Master Grade, I think this is definitely a fine gobbler that you can try because for a frame came from the 2008, it's not really that bad. And the articulation is amazing. The detail is absolutely amazing as well, especially on that cannon. But you know, as I said, although the Blast Impulse can stand by itself, but it suffers from the problem where you have to find that specific balance point for the Impulse to stand, which is a pretty difficult as well. And it's pretty difficult to make poses with the backpack as well, because the backpack joint is really tight. And just a quick FYI for you, if you're trying to make this pose right here, make sure you use the full movable hand instead of the weapon holding hand. The weapon holding hand is too is too small for the handle. So just use the movable hand to make this pose in case you want to make it. But anyway, guys, I decided to end this video right here. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening for this whole review. Like this video if you enjoy it and if this is helpful and subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.